that was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were killed at Stonewall. Nobody was Nobody killed. Was one of the most confusing bits of drama to ever come out of RuPaul's Drag Race was the infamous story that would end up changing the trajectory of Robbie Turner's career. In this video, I'm going to be discussing Robbie Turner's Drag Race journey and some of the elements that came into play leading up to the Uber fiasco, as well as the aftermath and what it would mean for her career. This is the confusing case of Robbie Turner. On February 1st, 2016, the cast of Season 8 was announced, revealing a batch of 12 fresh new queens that the world could obsess over. I'd consider Season 8 to be one of the last seasons to air before the show truly became mainstream. After all, Season 8 would go on to become the first season to win any type of Emmy nomination. Within the new cast of girls, some of the immediate standouts were queens like Kim Chi, Derek Barry, and of course the New York City girls which instantly became fan favorites like Acid Betty, Bob the Drag Queen, and Thorgy Thor. Another interesting part of the cast was Dax Exclamation Point, who is actually Violet Tchotchke's drag mother. I remember seeing an interview where Violet discussed how one of the makeup tips that she learned from Dax was that drag makeup is not so much about looking like a woman, but more so a caricature of a woman, which inspired the way Violet would do her makeup. That being said, while season 8 aired, there was never any big acknowledgements from Violet towards Dax. It gave the sense that they weren't really all that close. Even on the first episode of season 8, Violet is in the same room as Dax, but the edit didn't show any observations made by Violet regarding her drag mother. It reminds me of how during the airing of season 11, Monet Exchange seemed to always avoid the question of whether Honey Davenport was her drag mother. Of course, on a recent episode of Sibling Rivalry, Bob joked about how Monet has only now began to fully claim Honey Davenport as her drag mother. But back to the topic at hand. Robbie Turner would go on to have an okay run on season 8. The first episode, she delivered an outfit which seemed like it was going to be for sure in the bottom two. But she was ultimately saved from having a lip sync for her life when Layla McQueen was put up for elimination along with Eliminatia Lopez. For a lot of fans, the most shocking part of the season 8 premiere was Layla McQueen being placed in the bottom two, despite having a much better outfit than Robbie. Regardless, Nasha and Layla would lip sync to applause by Lady Gaga, and Layla would completely serve her performance and stay another episode. The second episode of season 8 would feature Robbie Turner in one of the best rusicals to come out of the show, which was titled Bitch Perfect. And Robbie would then provide us with a gorgeous glamorous red dress for the red carpet premiere theme. By season 8 episode 3, it seemed it was time for Robbie Turner to prove her talent, by showcasing her acting ability through an acting challenge. Yet, the episode would end in her landing in the bottom 2 with Cynthia Lee Fontaine. Just to refresh your memory, this was the episode that they made the queens roller skate down the runway. So, they asked both queens if they'd lip sync with heels or wheels. And Robbie Turner said she'd lip sync with the roller skates on, while Cynthia said she'd do it in heels. And at that moment, we kind of knew who was going to go home. Just as a side note, I remember the super trailer for season 8 featured a part of the lip sync where Robbie Turner falls off the stage in his roller skates. And everyone on Reddit was freaking out thinking that she fell off stage for real. New season premieres Monday, March 7th at when I first watched this lip sync, I was super gagged when she fell off the stage. But of course she didn't hurt herself since they had added padded cushions all around the stage. Although, part of me secretly wonders what would have happened had two queens that didn't know how to skate landed in the bottom two of that episode and both decided to lip sync with wheels anyway. Like, I feel production got really lucky that no queen ended up breaking their ankle in an attempt to give it their all to stay in their competition. A fun fact from this lip sync is that Robbie actually broke one of the light bulbs from the stage, which caused her to be broken pieces of glass on the floor while she and Cynthia were lip syncing. And when Cynthia did the splits, she actually ended up landing on the broken pieces of glass. By the time the lip sync was done, Cynthia's leg was bleeding and had to be seen by a nurse. Which is why in her elimination, she is no longer wearing the ugly red fishnets on her leg anymore. Robbie Turner would end up having to lip sync again on episode 6, this time against Derek Barry to I Don't Care, I Love It by Icona Pop. Even though it was obvious that Derek had the edge over the song and was very much winning the lip sync, it was endearing to see Robbie at least try to keep up with her. That's until she did this weird jump into the air and took off her wig in the process of it. She alluded to her strategy being to not give the judges what they want, which is a very odd take to have. Robbie Turner would end up being eliminated on episode 6, placing 7th. 
which actually reminds me of how short Season 8 actually was. To refresh your memory, Season 8 had a total of 10 episodes. It also had one of the smallest casts in a while, with the last time a main season having 12 contestants was Season 2. As for the reason behind only having 12 queens, many speculated it was so they could fit with the theme of 100, which symbolized the milestone the show had entered with reaching 100 different queens to compete on the show. Others have speculated that Season 8 was cut short due to having to split their production budget of that year for All Stars 2. To provide some context, in the summer of 2015, two seasons of Drag Race were filmed. First was season 8, and shortly after production would film All Stars 2. Detox said in an interview that she thought production was going to have one of the queens from season 8 compete on All Stars 2, to throw off the rest of the contestants. And while that would have been iconic, I'm kinda glad it didn't happen. What makes Robbie's run so peculiar is that it seems production had a lot of expectations out of her. As we know, RuPaul barely ever gives emotional send-offs, but when she eliminated Robbie Turner, there was a clear juxtaposition between the way RuPaul spoke about Robbie and the edit that she would end up receiving. For example, when Ru eliminates Robbie, she says, quote, Now I know I have a heart, because it's breaking. Which is a clear reference to The Wizard of Oz, after all, it was a Wizard of Oz-themed episode. Yet, it seemed like a very specific quote to use. Almost as if RuPaul knew that Robbie could have offered a lot more than what she delivered, but after being provided so many chances, it was clear that it was time for her to go. And that final lip sync certainly proved it. Also, just as a side note, Robbie Turner said that during the filming of season 8, the majority of the cast would sort of pick on Derek Barry, which was largely due to Derek being known as a Britney Spears impersonator, and thus they didn't see her as a real drag queen, or not in need of being on the show. Yet the final edit of the season would only really show Derek's reactions to people's shade, making him one of the villains for season 8. Now back to the topic of the video, the Robbie Turner Uber incident would take place during the airing of season 10. On April 15, 2018, Robbie posted a series of tweets on Twitter which stated that she had been in an Uber ride which got into an accident after being hit by a drunk driver. She then says that her Uber driver actually died from the accident and that the only reason Robbie survived was thanks to the fact that she was wearing a seatbelt. The tweets go as follows. I just woke up. I've been in a car accident. I didn't recollect it. I'm not certain what happened. My driver did not survive. I'm home with barely a scratch, but when I was informed of what actually happened, my closest family and friends came to mind. Wear a seatbelt. I did. Her next tweet reiterates the story again, only with a few more details, stating, Last night, on my way home, my Uber was struck by a drunk driver. I closed my eyes briefly and it happened. I heard it but hit my head and it was over. They ran tests at the hospital but outside of my shoulder feeling jammed and my right eye hurting, I only have a bruise. And of course Robbie would end the series of tweets as a trilogy with her last tweet basically saying that you should appreciate those people in your life that bring you joy because at any moment anything can happen. This set of tweets is very peculiar because having the benefit of hindsight, we know that none of what's described actually happened. There was no Uber driver that died and there was no visit to the hospital. So it just seemed like a fake story that was created to provide a lesson to everybody about how life is short and you should show love to the people around you before they're gone. I wanted to point out how for the two years between Robbie's appearance on season 8 and the infamous Uber driver incident, there was a lot of random stories that Robbie would tweet that seemed very hyperbolized. But most of the fans just assumed she was trying to be funny. To many fans, Robbie's method of storytelling just came across as insincere, which meant that to a lot of people, the story she'd say seemed so far-fetched that it lacked credibility. That was of course until she released the Uber driver tweets. Initially, fans were super supportive of Robbie Turner, showing her a lot of love and positivity as she had just gone through what for many would be a very traumatic event. Yet, it would only take a couple days before the revelation came forward which manifested as a huge turning point for Robbie's career. The scandal began to come into play when the Seattle Police Department stated they had no record of that accident ever happening. Uber would also release a statement saying that they also had no record of the crash ever happening. Finally, Robbie Turner's home bar that she worked at stated that she also noticed many inconsistencies with Robbie's story. When she showed up for work, after releasing the tweets and seemed to not be able to piece the story together as the owners of the bar asked her questions about it. 
So it was pretty much confirmed at this point that the incident was a fake story created by Robbie, presumably to gain social media attention or to genuinely try to send a message of unity. But like the way she went about it was just super weird. Fans and fellow Rue girls took to social media to discuss how it was even possible for someone to trick people into believing they were in a car accident of which someone actually died in. This was one of the biggest scandals at the time and everyone was just demanding an explanation from Robbie on why she did what she did. Robbie Turner's career after the Uber driver incident is hard to describe because she wasn't exactly cancelled, yet the effects that it would have on her career were parallel to that of a cancellation. For example, the only times that Robbie is ever mentioned in the fanbase now is to joke about the Uber driver incident or to point out when Kimchi said that Robbie had lied during Untucked about it being his birthday just so Debbie Harry could give him special attention. As I was putting this video together, I was watching an interview of Robbie Turner on Hey Queen from May 2017. In it, she promotes a book of hers titled I'll Tell You For Free, which is a book comprised of hundreds of stories that went on in her life. Even Johnny McGovern, the host of the show, jokingly says that he had no idea Robbie even had a book. Immediately after hearing about this, I thought to myself that I should buy it and see what kind of stories Robbie might have written. Yet, upon researching online, it seemed that the book never actually existed, or at least was never published. In the interview, she provides Johnny with a copy of the book, yet online it is nowhere to be found. All you can really find is a review post made by a user named Robbie Turner that has zero reviews. Now, I'm not saying Robbie also lied about the book, but it is weird that there seems to be no record of it. Again, the alleged book release was supposed to take place just under a year before the Uber scandal, so it definitely wasn't cancelled because of that. When the Uber driver scandal initially started, Robbie was silent for a couple days as fans were angry over the fact that she had made such a horrible lie. But a couple weeks later, she would end up doing an exclusive interview with Entertainment Weekly. I actually didn't know about this interview until recently, but it makes the situation a lot weirder. Because you'd think that in this interview, the focus would be to create some sort of apology or atonement for what had transpired just weeks ago. However, in the interview, Robbie confirms that yes, the car crash never happened and no Uber driver was ever killed. As for the reason why she even made the tweets, she goes on to state that she thinks she might have been drugged by someone or that she must have fell in the shower and that while she was unconscious, she experienced a very vivid dream which led her to believe upon waking up that she had been in a car crash. This response is naturally very very odd. It gets even weirder when you think about how after being involved in a scandal like the Uber driver incident that Robbie seemed to have no one in her circle to properly teach Robbie how to move forward with the scandal. In this response, Robbie doesn't really admit to lying, it's more so her saying that the reason the information she gave out was false is due to her being under the impression that since she fell in the shower and woke up with her head hurting that tweeting to everyone that you were in a car crash was the answer. Subsequently, this response still doesn't explain why she said she woke up at the hospital or how she figured out the Uber driver died. But later on in the interview, she does offer an explanation for that. Robbie Turner is then asked, quote, When you woke up, did you attempt to contact the authorities to confirm what had happened? End quote. To which Robbie responds that he did not contact anyone because his vivid dream included going to the emergency room, so when he woke up, she assumed that it was real and that it had already happened. She also says in the interview that when she did find out that the car crash had never happened, she felt very embarrassed. Yet she actively kept trying to gather more information about what happened, which resulted in her getting mental health support through seeing different social workers and psychiatrists. She even says that during this time period she thought she was losing her mind, citing that there has been a lot of issues in her personal life. So, it's clear that the approach Robbie took to this response interview was not to own up necessarily to what happened, but instead disguise it as a sort of misunderstanding. Which is fine and all, but it only leads me to believe there's two conclusions that can come of this story. One is that Robbie just lied and didn't want to own up to it, so she decided to make up even more lies, such as getting drugged by someone, slipping in a shower, and having a vivid dream. Or the other option, which is that Robbie actually believes everything she was saying and was genuinely shocked upon realizing none of the events ever happened. And honestly, neither one of those options is very appealing, so if you guys have any other theories, let me know. 
Now, there was one part of the interview where I kind of agreed with Robbie Turner. For instance, she speaks about how Drag Race has created a larger bullying community that disguises their insults as calling someone out, despite the fact that most of them are really just bullying for the sake of it. She even points out that some queens she's worked with didn't take long before they jumped at the opportunity to make fun of Robbie online. Which is kind of true, you can for sure tell with a lot of these scandals that the queens get into that fans seem to not realize what the point of calling someone out is for. Which in theory is to both hold someone accountable for their actions, but also educate them on why what they did was wrong. Most of the time, it just turns into a playground of insults to make fun of someone that made a mistake. But I will say that the sentiment is not really all that applicable to the Uber driver story, because that was actually a pretty big lie to say that your Uber driver fully died. At the same time though, Robbie losing his drag career seemed like a complete overkill given that no one was actually hurt. The final chapter of the story would be a final Instagram post made by Robbie Turner where she gave a sort of apology for what happened. In the post, she confirms that while she understands that the crash never happened, she needs people to understand she's going through a lot of stress in her life. She apologizes to the CEO of Uber, her home bar, and to anyone that was offended by her original post. This would be the last time that Robbie would communicate with the fan base of the show at any level. Ever since then, she's remained very under the radar, with many theorizing she quit drag completely. Other fans have theorized that perhaps Robbie is a compulsive liar. The theory that I chose to believe is that she has secretly turned into an Uber driver herself. It's hard to really know what was going on with Robbie Turner during that time period, or what she's currently doing now, considering she's not active on any of her social medias and doesn't seem to be doing drag anymore. We also never see or hear about her hanging out with her fellow Drag Race sisters. Yet it leads to the question, was the Uber driver scandal enough to end Robbie Turner's career? Or do you think she should have been provided more leeway from the fan base? In conclusion, I'd say Robbie Turner wasn't really cancelled, she more so cancelled herself and removed her presence within the fan base of the show. Ultimately, this is the legacy that Robbie Turner left behind. Although it is in a way sort of a tragic tale. I remember thinking when this all transpired that Robbie would make a comeback a year later and use the whole Uber driver situation as a meme. Sort of like Alaska did when everyone was calling her a snake during All Stars 2. But no, Robbie would end up disappearing and we'd never really hear from her again. The truth of the matter is we will never know the full scope of this situation. What we do know is that no one was actually hurt from this story, the Uber driver never existed, and Robbie certainly didn't put anyone in danger, aside from maybe Uber's public image. But this story will go down in Drag Race history as one of the weirdest things to ever grace the Drag Race subculture. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'm really enjoying reading all your comments, and if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at GreenGate22. I'll see you guys next time.